Good morning. According to mayoclinic.org, dysthymia, also called persistent depressive disorder, is a continuous long-term chronic form of depression. You may lose interest in normal daily activities, feel hopeless, lack productivity, and have low self-esteem, and an overall feeling of inadequacy. These feelings last, can last, um, I'm sorry, these feelings last for years and may significantly interfere with your relationships, school, work, and daily activities. Six years ago, while attending counseling, I was told that I have dysthymia. Recently, while participating in a mental health informational, I learned that, that the correct wording is, I live with dysthymia, or I live with a certain condition. Romans 15, 13 reads, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hope, joy, peace. But my counselor said I have dysthymia. I learned that I live with dysthymia. I experience feelings of hopelessness, inadequacy, lack of productivity, self-esteem. There's no joy and peace and hope listed in the description of dysthymia. It's a contradiction as old as Adam and Eve. Satan thrives on sowing seeds of doubt in God's children. Genesis chapter three, verse one reads, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from the tree in the garden? By sowing that seed of doubt, sin entered the world. Throughout my childhood, I compared myself to others' appearances and capabilities. I'm too skinny, too quiet, not smart enough. And the list of God's mishaps with how he created me went on and on. In high school, I felt out of place because my friends lived in the suburbs and I lived in the hood. As I entered college, which I only did because that was the family expectation, not because I knew what I wanted to do, more doubtful seeds were planted and these seeds reaped jealousy. I became jealous of people who were goal oriented, had declared a major, and knew their purpose. By the time I discovered my passion, I had already wasted three years attending classes that just sounded interesting. I was easily led down any career path that was mentioned to me. I was told, you should be a nurse, but how when I don't like bodily liquids and fluids? <laughs> you should be a career counselor. My own career path was crooked. How can I lead someone else? Psalm 139, 14 says, I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well, but I felt inadequate. When my life didn't unfold as I thought it should, the devil seized those opportunities to sow more seeds. I wasn't supposed to marry until I was 95 years old. <laughs> Why? Because I didn't want to be bothered with a spouse for an extended period of time. Every time Sugar and I would have a disagreement, I found myself saying, see, this is why you weren't supposed to marry so soon. When Sugar, Olivia, Silas, and I moved from Cleveland to Fort Wayne, Indiana for the seminary, despite being told that the church called him and not me, we moved for the seminary. I struggled with hopelessness. I left my family, friends, and Fat Fish Blue, a restaurant that sold the best fried green tomatoes, to support Sugar's goal of becoming a pastor, and all the while wondering where I fit in in my own journey. I failed to accept Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 23. Lord, I know that people's lives are not their own. It is not for them to direct their steps. At the time, despite having earned my bachelor's degree in elementary education, and being a licensed teacher, a career path I truly enjoyed, I lacked a feeling of satisfaction. While in Fort Wayne, I worked as a social worker and helped women achieve their goals, but lacked personal goals. As Sugar neared completion of the seminary, and we had the opportunity to select this, the, the next state to call home, we chose three states on the Far East Coast. 
In April of 2006, I knew God had abandoned me when I discovered that Sugar's first call was to Northwest Indiana. I didn't understand how or why God would send my family somewhere that wasn't on our prayer list. We continued to face challenges with jobs and were without a home for a few weeks. At times, I thought we were the modern day James and Florida Evans of the good times. <laughs> Despite the challenges, God continued to sustain me. I went on to earn a Master of Arts in Curriculum and Instruction, a Master of Education in Psychological and Educational Foundations, and a Degree of Education Specialist in School Psychology. In 2015, I was recognized as Teacher of the Year. I'm now the principal of a small Lutheran school in Northwest Indiana, the place where I thought God had sent me to die. Now I know he sent me there to thrive. A few years ago, Sugar challenged me to read my Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I hesitated because after all, I know God and I'm a career Christian and a lifelong Lutheran. Only so that he would stop harassing me, I decided to read the Bible. I was proud of myself when I finally read the last chapter of Revelation. Then he had the audacity to challenge me to reread it for comprehension. I'm grateful I did because every time I read my Bible, I learn more information than before, depending on the challenges I'm facing. I still live with, with dysthymia and this summer it was confirmed that I also live with lupus. I still battle with negative feelings especially when I'm overwhelmed or stressed. But what's different today is that I recognize those attacks and I counter them with God's word. In closing, I leave you with Habakkuk chapter three, verses 17 through 19. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop falls and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my savior. The Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go on to the heights. I am filled with hope, joy, and peace. Amen. <laughs>